Uh, my question pertains to the enhanced physical education. The question is, can you elaborate a little more on what enhanced PE refers to? Is it the amount of time during an active physical education class for physical activity, or does it look to increase the amount of time and frequency physical education is offered in the school? Dr. Sarah Lee was involved on the school section of this report. Can you address that question? Sure. Hi, Jane. It's Sarah. Hi. Um, in the report itself, we talk um, very specifically about enhanced um, PE, and we describe that it's characterized by increasing the amount of time that students spend in moderate to vigorous physical activity during physical education lessons. Um, it also is characterized by adding more physical education classes to the school curriculum or lengthening the time of existing physical education class, um, meeting the needs of all students, including those with disabilities, and then finally, including activities that are enjoyable for students while emphasizing both knowledge and skills that can be used for a lifetime. So that comes directly from the draft report. Okay, thank you. That clarifies. Dr. Stephen McDonough, would you like to ask a question? Uh, not a question, but I have a, a comment. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to compliment you and everyone, Shelley and Dr. Risa, everyone who worked on this. is an excellent uh, document. Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, the effort was uh, evidence-based, and that's really important for us physicians in particular to know what works and where we should be putting our efforts into. I think it, uh, it's important for policymakers, particularly the emphasis on uh, multi-component school-based interventions. Uh, if your community is not doing this to the optimum, that's where you should be putting your effort into. I really appreciate the preschool uh, focus uh, because we have a lot of children that I see that are four or five years of age or already overweight or obese. Uh, I think it's also very important for research organizations to see these recommendations. I work in primary care as a pediatrician. Uh, we don't know exactly what works in our our area and we need to uh, see those studies done and give us guidance where we should be putting our effort in. We see children every day that are overweight or obese. We make recommendations on improving nutrition, uh, eating better fruits and vegetables, increasing their activity, uh, uh, decreasing bad things to eat and drink, uh, decreasing sedentary lifestyle. We try to give them to community organizations, uh, but we really don't know if that's uh, how effective our efforts are going to be. So. I think it's an outstanding job for everyone who's been working on this, and I'm really looking forward to the President's Council considering this, and I think we shouldn't have any trouble uh, getting behind it and giving it our full endorsement. I just really want to thank you for all that you've done. It's been just a great effort. On behalf of the subcommittee, thank you for those uh, kind and generous comments, and I'll just take this moment to uh, thank the subcommittee, they really uh, did an incredible amount of work and uh, it, was, it was a joy doing it because of the impact we hope this report will have. Are there other questions or comments from members of the President's Council? Can you hear me? <clears throat> this is Carl Edwards. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Carl. Okay, yeah. For Hey, first of all, Dr. Risa, that's spectacular, the amount of information that's in that document. I, I first went over it this morning. I think that's great work. I think it, just like everyone said, it lets us know where the problems are. And I, I had kind of one broader um, question, and it, it has to do with, if you guys will pardon me, I'll tell a short story. Uh, a dentist came to our elementary school when I was young. It's a public school. I don't know what the... the um, you know how they got the dentist there to speak to us, but it was it was interesting how he described to us our tooth decay. He gave all the kids we were fourth graders maybe he gave us all a, a Jolly Rancher piece of candy. All the kids thought he was the greatest guy in the world, and and we all stuck candy in our mouths and and um, and as we we're sitting there with our candy, he he got out the the projector and showed us what the the sugar was doing to our teeth right then. And I swear to you, to this day. 33 years old, every time I eat a piece of candy, I think about that presentation. And as I look through your 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 information that the subcommittee uh, and you put together, 
it, it struck me that you said that the home environment and therefore the 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 person's personal impetus to to be fit I think is of huge importance. And so I wondered if this this type of information would allow us to have a leaping off point and say how do we in how do we psychologically deliver this information to kids in the way that that dentist delivered that tooth decay lesson to us? You know, for instance, if we wanted children to be in front of television or computer screens more, if we wanted them to sit in front of a computer, we would give them Facebook and they'd just do it. And so I, I wonder if there was any research to uh, to describe the best vector to, to deliver this information so that it stimulated them personally. Well, let me begin with that, and Katrina, then you can uh, take over and uh, direct it to other members of the subcommittee, or other members of the subcommittee can just uh, jump in. But, Carl, I, I would direct you to the information related to the multi-component um, interventions in schools, because part of what we find in the multi-component interventions are activities that uh, attempt to not only educate students um, about physical activity, but but also to include activities that are more enjoyable for the students and increase their their skills and their knowledge and in ways that they can last a, a lifetime. And so, uh, to me, that's very analogous to the situation you described a, as a young boy, where uh, you had a presentation and intervention uh, really that made an impression on you for your entire life and helped change your your behavior so I think that the the multi-component aspect of um, interventions in schools would be where the evidence suggests that we can have um, an impact on increasing physical activity does anyone else on the subcommittee want to comment I, well, well, thank you for that, and I, I will look more into that because, as we all know, it's, I mean, we know we know what should be done, and it's so hard to to deliver that in a way that's that's received well. I, I just it's an honor to serve with with you and and everyone else on the on the council. You guys do such great work, and everybody you've worked so hard, and uh, it's it just really uh, it's great to hear you speak, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Carl, and thank you for your, all your leadership. <laughs> 